This use update is brought to you by Grab somebody and tell them hello It's Thursday, November 12th, and time for the Barbados Today afternoon update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Our top story, as police continues its intensive search for missing teen in Miller John, there is an appeal for help in locating five other people, some of whom have been missing for 11 months now. Police spokesman David Welch tells Barbados Today that investigators are following several leads for 18-year-old Imela of Paynes Bay, St. James, who was last seen on October 7th. Well, says the force has not had any luck so far in locating her, despite a $2,500 reward posted by her family. But they continue to pursue information received by the public. However, he says of the 80 people who have gone missing so far for the year, six others, including Imela, are still unaccounted for. The person is still unaccounted for her, Anthony Griffith, 56 years, of Crusher Site Road, Prospect, St. James. He was reported missing on the 10th of January this year. Sydney Atahol, for 31 years, of 3rd Avenue, Liquor's Village, St. Michael. He was reported missing on the 15th of January. Duane Pigott, 35 years, of Melville, Melvin Hills, St. Joseph. He was reported missing on the 27th of March. Lionel Howell, 76 years of Churchview, St. John. He was reported missing on the 30th of May. And Imali John, 18 years of Paynes Bay, St. James. She was reported missing on the 9th of October. Again, we are appealing to members of the public to give us any information. They may have seen the person either during the period that was they were reported missing, or we may have had conversation with them before, just before, or during the period that they reported missing. Any little information that they may have, they can give us. Anyone with information pertaining to any of the six missing people are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-TIPS, Police Emergency at 211, or the nearest police station. All eyes on Supreme Court number one at this hour, where a ruling on the BHL injunction is expected sometime today. All parties involved return to the court for a 9.30 a.m. seating after Trinidadian attorney for Ansa McCall, Reginald Armour, QC, successfully argued for an extension of the injunction before Chief Justice Samarston Gibson last evening. The injunction, which was filed on November 3rd, halted all trading of BHL shares on the Barbados Stock Exchange or otherwise. It also allows Ansa Macau to fight an earlier agreement between BHL and the other bidder, SLU Beverages, which is owned by Ambev. The two are in a competitive bidding war for total ownership of BHL. Minister of Industry and Small Business Development Donville Innes wants to see Bridgetown transformed into a safe city where businesses are opened 24 hours. Acknowledging that the city is not attractive as it used to be, Innes says it is time that the government, along with the private sector and civil society, find creative ways to bring the city alive. And he says the government is committed to addressing the security concerns in the area. I'm a firm believer in staggered working hours. I'm a firm believer in flexible working hours. I don't see why Bridgetown needs to close at 4.30 on evenings. We really need to find ways in which many of our enterprises can remain open longer and well into the night. There have to be some pull factors and there have to be some push factors. And I firmly believe that to make that happen, we're going to have a more flexible of our labor laws too to stop this thing that says you, if you go beyond 5 o'clock, you're talking about overtime or uh, double pay in this country. There's some who are going to just have to stagger the work hours to make it happen. So that those who are strolling out of the law offices and, and other offices in Bridgetown can take their time and go shopping and know the stores are still open uh, on evenings as well. 
Guinness was addressing a gathering last evening at Cave Shepherd on Broad Street following a tour of the renovated store. The creative sector has the potential to help grow the economy, so says Chief Executive Officer of Small Business Association, Lynette Holder. However, she acknowledged that industry officials are already working with the education and tourism sectors, but she believes there is a need for more collaboration with entrepreneurs as well. We are at a stage now where there are several sunset industries. The research shows that there are several traditional industries that no longer have the viability to take our economy to the next level of growth and development. And so we have to be looking at new ones. And the cultural industries definitely represent what we now consider a sunrise industry, and therefore the potential for entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial activity. So in addition to cultural education and culture and tourism as, as having synergistic relationships, we are also positive to view that culture and uh, entrepreneurship offer a similar opportunity. Holder was speaking there this morning on day two of the stakeholder consultation with the creative sector at the Cave Hill School of Business. The soon-to-be-opened David Thompson Health Services Complex in St. John will have a section dedicated to providing a chronic care model for management of non-communicable diseases such as diabetes. So says Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George as he delivered a lecture organized by the Barbados Association of by the Diabetes Association of Barbados, pardon me. The revelation comes on the eve of World Diabetes Day. In an effort to strengthen health systems delivery in primary care, the Ministry of Health will be introducing the chronic care model for the management of non-communicable diseases at the soon-to-be-opened David Thompson Health and Social Services Complex in St. John. This model has elements of an empowered patient, an engaged and informed community, and a well-trained cadre of healthcare professionals leading to the desired outcome of better patient management. There's regional and international news after this short break. Secure your future, be financially strong. Since 1983, we have been there for you. A smart range of products, great tax benefits. We're the solution to your hopes and your dreams. The Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. The Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. Humble beginnings to smart loans, smart savings. Save smart and borrow smarter. That's the move for me. Stability, prosperity. We're the solution to your hopes and your dreams. The Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. The Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. To news from the region, pressure mounts on Venezuela to allow observers to monitor the upcoming elections on December 6. More than 150 lawmakers from Latin America and the United States have signed a letter addressed to President Nicolas Maduro urging him to accept the observers. The international observers, they say, are needed for the poll. Venezuela has invited monitors from regional body ONSA but has rejected those from the Organization of American States. And finally, the Venezuela government is yet to comment on the arrest of two nephews of the country's first lady, Franic Francisco Flores de Frentes and Elfrin Antonio Campo Flores, were arrested in Haiti and sent to the U.S. to face drug trafficking charges. The two, according to reports, are accused of conspiring to smuggle 800 kilograms of cocaine into the United States. The two men are due to appear before a federal judge in New York today. And that's news, but there's more on our website at www.barbitistoday.tv. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and of course, like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. There you can get all the latest news and sports. Sam Fernella Wedderburn, good afternoon.